Welcome back. We've got the Good Dog Rescue with us right now. And uh, can you tell us who's joining us this morning? So this morning we have Darcy and Trevor. Mm -hmm. And so they are from two different litters. Um, I actually think Darcy, Darcy's being a little shy this morning. Here she is. Darcy will always just she's move so behind cute. you. She's just yes. like. <laughs> so she is super sweet. She's very chill. Um, she's about oh, five months girl. old. Um, we were supposed to bring her sister, but her sister's fortunate enough to be in a foster to adopt situation. Great. So hopefully she's going to find her home. So both of these dogs are going to be relatively large. Mm. So um, probably best in a single family home. Both of them do very well with other dogs. They're doing a nice job with their training. Pretty much housebroken, sleeping through the night in their kennels. Oh. Um, Trevor's a little more vocal, yes, um, but because of that, <laughs> it's probably good to be in a house and not so much in an apartment mm -hmm. for two different reasons. You know, he can be a little more vocal, but he actually can be, sh this is his shyness coming out. This okay. is like more, more like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And her shyness is she's just kind of sitting back here being, being super chill. Um, but because of that, a really busy environment mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be great for either one of them. You and can just see how big his paws are too. Yeah. Oh yeah, and how thick his legs are. <laughs> I so. can relate to Darcy over here, just laying down, a nice <laughs> nap, you know, chilling out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we wanted to, you know, take this opportunity um, basically to say that we have quite a few dogs in this great age. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about it is when they're like four to five months old, they're starting to get through the teething phase. Both mm -hmm. of them take treats nice and gently. Um, they are housebroken. They can sleep through the night. You know, when they're younger, they're a, it's a little more work. They still need a lot of training. So that's what you, you know, you get the kind of the, the good thing of a puppy, but they have a little more focus and attention than if they're younger. So um, it's a great opportunity to adopt what I think is the perfect age. I think so too. Know. And yesterday, it obviously snowed, but earlier in the week, we saw some record heat. We really wanted to take this opportunity as it's starting to get warmer and warmer to talk about heat issues with dogs, cars and pets and safety, also ticks. Can then we start by talking about just when the temperature gets to, I saw 75 degrees outside, if your pets inside the car could get up to 109. My goodness. Yes, and that's the thing. I mean, even you think 75 degrees, it's not that hot. But look at this, this chart, you know, in 10 minutes, it can be, you know, way too hot for your dog. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that, it, and rolling down the window, there's, okay, let's talk about that when you're driving. Your dog can jump out of that window. Mm. I personally have had to help with two dogs at different times that jumped out of a window. Oh my oh, goodness. No. So just... Okay. And both of them had to go to the vet. So mm -hmm. make sure you only leave that window open enough. All they need to do is stick their little nose out this because if they stick their head out, they can have eye damage. Mm -hmm. But just like that, if you are, you've got your car parked and you think rolling your window down is gonna cool your car off? No, not it's enough. not. So just leave your dog at home. You know, mm -hmm. when it's, once it starts to get hot, they don't need to go with you everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it sounds like a good idea, but it's not, mm -hmm. you know? And these, that's the nice thing. Both of these dogs are comfortable in a kennel. So a kennel is a safe place yes. and, and let them be there. Mm -hmm. And then as far as ticks, the reason we're gonna talk about that is her sister actually has a tick-borne anemia. Oh. So it's easily treated with antibiotics. Um, in 30 days, she should be fine. Actually, it starts reversing fairly quickly. <laughs> But that's why it's so important to get your dogs tested. It's mm -hmm. a 4DX test that will mm -hmm. test all that. And if you go walking through long grass or hiking, right. we have ticks here. I mean, we see more of them from our dogs that come in from New Mexico and Texas, but it, it can happen here too. So just make sure it's really easy to treat if you catch it early. Well, I'm really, so glad really that you mentioned that because yes, here in Colorado, we love our hiking and yeah, our dogs can be impacted by the ticks there. For people who are interested in <laughs> adopting or fostering, uh, how can they get in contact with y'all? So the gooddogrescue.org and thank you so much, Jessica. We can always use fosters. We can't save any a single one of these great puppies without them. Mm -hmm. And um, the great thing about when you adopt from us, um, their dog will be fully vetted. It'll be microchipped. So you're, in essence, you're, 
you don't really have to spend any medical money for a year. Mm -hmm. So your adoption fee covers the spay and neuter and all the vetting, which is a great thing. And if you do foster, you're provided with food and all your supplies. All right, thank you. So goodogrescue.org.